today we look at weighted averages um it is one of my favorite topics and the reason is that we see it everywhere and not just in gmat porn but also in mba and in later life too you know those very complicated looking finance formula many of them are actually based on weighted averages and once you're able to identify that they become extremely simple and intuitive so pay close attention and uh, in case you've not already gone through the ratios uh, video please do check that out once because we are going to use a lot of ratio concepts in this video so um, let's jump in before we look at what weighted averages are we should see what averages are we know how we calculate average right we say it is sum of values upon the number of values basically it is that number which can replace each element of the list and the sum of the list would still stay the same so for example if there is a boy of age 12 years and a girl of age 18 years how do we find their average we say it is 12 plus 18 divided by 2 which gives us 15 years So then, the average age of the boy and the girl is fifteen years. Note that it lies right in the middle of twelve and eighteen. Fifteen is three steps ahead of twelve and three steps behind eighteen. This is what average is, right? It lies right in the middle of twelve and eighteen. But then, what happens in case we have two boys and one girl? So now we have two twelves, and we have only one eighteen. will the average still lie at 15 no it won't let's calculate and see we get that this is equal to 14 so now the average has moved from 15 years to 14 years it has moved closer to the age of the boys why is that that is because we have two boys we have more boys so the weightage given to the boys is more and that is why the average has moved closer to their age what if it were the flip case for example what if we had six boys and 12 girls now we have many more girls than boys we would calculate the average again by adding 12 6 times and by adding 18 12 times and dividing by the total number of uh, kids which is 18 so the average in this case would be 16 how would we obtain that by this calculation this 16 is closer to the age of the girls now the age of the boys was 12 when the age of the girls was 18 now the 16 is closer to the age of the girls why because there are more girls so the weightage given to the girls is more and that is why the average has moved closer to the girls age now doing this calculation can be quite cumbersome so we have a more concise way of showing the same thing so we say that 12 is added 6 times so 12 into 6 plus 18 is added 12 times so 18 into 12 divided by the total which is 6 plus 12 of course the answer we obtain here is 16 this is nothing but an intuitive representation of weighted averages your 12 and 18 are the two ages which we are trying to average and 6 and 12 here these are the weights that we have given to each look at the formula the general formula of weighted average c average is equal to c1 w1 c2 w2 upon w1 plus w2 etc so what is c c is the characteristic that we are trying to average and w is the weight given to each instance of that character so here for example c1 was the age of boys and c2 was the age of girls W one was the number of boys is number of boys and W two is number of girls. So notice that this is exactly what we have done over here. So if you have more instances. you can keep adding c3 c4 c5 etc
Now consider a seesaw. If we put two equal weights on its two extremes, the fulcrum would need to be right in the middle to balance it out. But in case we put some extra weight on one of the extremes, what happens then? Then the fulcrum needs to be closer to that end to balance the weight. Right? This is the simple principle of a seesaw. The same is used over here in weighted averages as well. When we had said that we have one boy and one girl with the ages of 12 and 18, their average comes out to be right in the middle, which is 15. But what happens when we have two boys and one girl? Then the average goes closer to the age of the boys. Then the average over here we found out to be 14. So basically the distance between 12 and the average reduces and the distance between 18 and the average increases. This distance between 12 and 18 this is split in the same ratio as the ratio of the weights, but inverse. Because, of course, the average has to be closer to the higher one. So that is why this distance between 12 and 18, it gets split in the ratio 1 is to 2. Since the weights are in the ratio 2 is to 1. So since the distance between 12 and 18 is 6, over here we have 2 and over here we have 4. And that is how we get the average of 14. When we add 2 to 12, we get 14. This is pretty much what a scale method is. And this is what this formula represents as well. Let's draw the seesaw over here. We say this is C1. We say this is C2 at the two extremes. And somewhere over here is our C average. Now, if weight of C1 is W1, and weight of C2 is W2, then this distance of C1 and C2 gets split in the ratio W2 is to W1. Note that this is the inverse ratio. This same formula we can also obtain by just manipulating our regular formula, the standard formula that we know of weighted averages, which is C averages C1 W1 plus C2 W2 upon W1 plus W2. When we cross multiply, we get C average into W1 plus W2 is equal to C1 W1 plus C2 W2. Now taking the W1s on this side and W2s on this side, we get the same formula. It gives us the same formula. Normally, this formula is extremely useful and we may not even need to draw this diagram. We could just directly use this formula for our questions. Let's look at an example. So during a journey, a car traveled at a speed of 50 mph for a quarter of the time. So we need to find the uh, average speed over here. What was the average speed of the car during the journey? So our C average is basically speed. So C1 is one instance of speed which is given to us, which is 50 mph. And C2 is the other instance which is given to us as 60 mph. This was maintained for a quarter of the time. So for one fourth of the time, this was maintained. And then this was maintained for the rest of three fourths of the time. So then the weights of 50 and 60 mph are in the ratio 1 is to 3. They are in the ratio 1 is to 3. So if I were to draw that scale over here, I would say this is 50. I would say this is 60. The weight given to 50 is 1 and the weight given to 60 is 3. We just need the ratios, right? So then... This entire distance between 50 and 60, that is the distance of 10 mph, will be divided in the ratio 3 is to 1. So my average will lie at 57.5. I can obviously use the formula as well. I can say W1 by W2 is 1 by 3. That is equal to C2 minus C average. C2 is what? It is 60 minus C average is what I need to find, divided by C average minus 50. 
So I get my C average over here also as 57.5. To find out what the weights should be, identify C average. Whatever is in its denominator, that will be the weight. And in case you're still not sure, try to find out what the units of C average are. So, for example, they're miles per gallon. Then weights will be gallon. 